So first Peter chapter one, first Peter chapter two, and first John chapter one. Amen. First Peter chapter one, verse 15 says, but just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. For it is written, be holy, and I'm reading out of the NIV version, for I am holy. Your King James may read a little different or one of your other translations, but you get the point. Somebody say, I get it. I get it. I get it. The Bible says uh, what God's word proclaims to us to be holy as God is holy. First uh, Peter chapter two and verse nine, very familiar probably to some, probably so was first Peter chapter one. I'm sorry, I didn't tell you what verse. I was verse 15. I read first Peter chapter one, verse 15, and now first Peter chapter two, verse nine. First Peter chapter two, verse nine. Says, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. One more time, just because I love reading that to myself. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. The King James may say marvelous light. And so we are here. This is the second of this series that I've been teaching from these three words, righteousness, holiness, and sacredness. Righteousness, holiness, and sacredness. One of the things we recognize in this, and I said this uh, before, uh, even last week, that sacredness is synonymous with holiness. Righteousness, holiness, and sacredness. So you really can't look up or define or do your research on sacredness without running into, especially in the New Testament, running into holiness. In the Old Testament, you hear the word sacred a lot, but in the New Testament, that word sacred really transliterates and comes into being to be holiness. Uh -huh. So when we think sacredness, we think holiness. And we love sacredness now because it's a, it seemingly is an easier word for the new uh, culture to be able to stomach. All right. Uh, some some of us can say, oh, sacred. You're sacred. You are sacred. And that's a beautiful thing. And I love the sacredness. And I, I'm preaching about that. But before everything was uh, okay to say that it was sacred. Or you're sacred. Your life is sacred. You hear even politicians now say, life is sacred. People's lives are sacred. People don't have a problem saying sacred. But honey, let me tell you, it took a long time before folks, folks wanted to say they were holy. Oh I was as quiet in the sanctified church, uh, right? It, a lot of us had to go through a lot of trauma being holy, that's right, that's right. <laughs> even carrying the name holy, right? So many times I grew up in what was a Jerusalem Holiness Church or 12th and Stockton and a, a lady came up uh, in uh, that church later on, but originally before then in her holiness church, uh, Church of God in Christ and Church of God and all of these uh, churches where folks were known uh, by the fact that they were holy. Matter of fact, it was a thing that was not looked highly upon. Many times those who proclaim 
holiness were looked down on. They were accused of being them holy rollers. Yeah. Matter of fact, many times, <laughs> I see many times we were accused of being those ignorant people. That's those unlearned people. They don't want nothing but the Holy Ghost. They don't want no education. They don't want to go to school. All they want to do is sing and shout and, and beat tambourines and play drums and, and, and beat on the piano and the organ. Uh, but they were not considered uh, necessarily learned people because they got the stigma of the mere fact that they wanted more of God than they did anything. We were accused many times of not being anything other than those old holy rollers. Look at them in their long dresses. Look at them with their neckties on. Look at them with their hair uh, not straight. Look at them with their with their face nothing but some Vaseline on their face. Come on. <laughs> But, but we understand now that we get into this new uh, dispensation of believers adding uh, these new cultural, uh, deeply cultural sensitive individuals, yes, they can embrace sacredness and, and everybody wants to be, have a sacred life. Everybody wants to feel the sacredness of, of who they are. Everybody wants to embrace the fact, oh yes, you are so sacred, but now, the fact of the matter is sacredness to God is also holiness. You can't be sacred without being holy. You can't have a sacred life and not be holy, have a holy life. What does that mean when we talk about it? And that's my part two. It is holiness. Yeah, last week was sacredness. This week it is holiness. And the fact of the matter is they are one in the same. The Bible says, in as I read to you, 1 John 1 and 16, he says, finally, for it is written, be holy because I am holy. Because, I love that because it is what sets up this whole cause and effect, right? When we understand cause and effect, when in order to have any kind of effect, you must have a what cause, right? That's the only reason you had to go get an x-ray because you had a cause. Some, some cause you have to go. Glad you made it back in this morning. But you had a cause that made you have to go, have to go get checked. And every time there is an effect, right? There is also a cause. Nothing happens without a cause. Effect is what happens. The cause is why. The effect is what as I tell my students all the time, because we're always researching cause and effect, the, the, the effect is what, but the cause is why. The effect is what, but the cause is why. So in order to be holy, why do we need to be holy? God says, because I am holy. And you can't call yourself a child of God and distance yourself from the holiness of God. Ooh, help me, Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. We want to be all that we can be in God, but many times we don't want to embrace everything of God. We want to embrace all of this stuff we want to embrace. But we don't want to embrace all that causes what many times us to have to do self-introspection. Uh, many times we don't want to do the work, and somebody said do the work. That cause us to have to look at ourselves, to see us stripped down. Somebody say stripped down. I mean stripped down to the place where we see who we really are. And sometimes we realize many times what we see really is not always as pretty as we want to make it up to be. All right, it looks good today because we got on our nice clothes, we got on our neckties, we got on our a nice red uh, 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 lapel uh, uh, boutonniere so I can distract you, right? I want to keep you distracted so you don't see who I really am because sometimes I don't even like who I see sometimes. Even though I love me, many times I don't like what I see. Oh, I may, I may be the only one that confessed this morning. You don't have to confess, but, but every time I look in the mirror, sometimes when I look, 
I don't mean the reflection. I mean what I see as the reflection. Those things, Jessica, that I see when I ain't looking at me. Sometimes I see some things uh, that I see in me that, 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 that I may not be comfortable with. Those things that you see at the end of the week when you realize you really been procrastinating. Yeah, yeah, you've been putting on a, a good front. Yeah, you got through your work week, but you know it's about 10 other things you should have done. Oh, yeah, because you're sitting and telling everybody, I just didn't have time to get to it. Till you realize you watch TV five hours a night for five nights in a row, which means what? You done spent 25 hours in front of the television. Come on, somebody, not counting Saturday and Sunday. But yet we ain't have time to get it done. Come on, that's the kind of, that's the kind of stuff we see. Somebody said the stuff we see. Come on, it's the stuff that we see that is the stuff that's in our head that we don't want nobody to ever know what's in our head. Somebody said, oh, stars. Oh, my God. And somebody said years ago, what if our secret thoughts were all of a sudden put on a movie screen for everybody to see? What, what would we feel? How would we think? Some of y'all looking at me putting your mask back up right now. So I, I don't know. Let me put this mask on because I don't want him, him to even see how I'm looking right now. What if our secret thoughts were blasted on that screen of our lives and everybody to see? How would we feel? Would we still be considered saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost? God might have been under fire. Leave our run on to see what the Lord, what the end is going to do. Praise and thank the Lord. Come on. But the writer said, I believe it was Paul said, even when I would do good, evil is always present. Somebody says present. So we got to understand we live in this dichotomy. We live in this, this both and. It's this world of both and. It's not either or. It's both ends. Sometimes we got to live with both ends. Somebody said both ends. We got to live with the good and we got to live with sometimes the other side of us, right? The side that I tell that we know God's still working on me. Somebody said God is still working on me. Yeah, I've been in church basically all my life, but God knows he's still working on me. Somebody said he's still working on me. But I love it because something on the inside is working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Somebody said, oh, what a change in my life. Beauty is I'm not what I used to be. May not be what I want to be, but thank God. Somebody said, thank God. Woo. Thank God I'm not what I used to be. Somebody said, holiness. Somebody said, holiness. I love the song, holiness. We used to sing it. Holiness is right. Walking in the light. Come on, somebody say it. It's holy. Holiness is right. I know we want to, want to say it, but holiness is still right. Because holiness is who God is. I love it how Michael Stampley uh, sings the song. Thank God some folks sing it so I don't get in so much trouble by myself. Uh, uh, praise team leaders. Y'all know the feeling. We get these songs to kind of help bail us out, right? Because if not, if we had to just talk the song, we'd be in trouble. They'd be kicking us out. But thank God, Micah Stample said, holiness, holiness is what I long for. Righteousness, righteousness is what I need. Holiness, holiness. Thank God. He sang it because I was like, ooh, thank God. I ain't by myself. Tell somebody, tell somebody, I want it, I want it, I want it. Even though I don't feel like it. Many times, and that's what I love about holiness, and I can't wait to get to righteousness because I'm already there in my head because, because you realize, somebody say, I realize. Yeah. I realize that as a believer, we are literally, when we think holiness, it means set apart. Somebody say, I'm set apart. I'm set apart. That means I'm set apart. That means if any one of us be in Christ, we are a new creation. All things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. I don't care who don't believe it. Tell somebody, I know what happened in my life. 
Hallelujah. Oh, what a change in my life. I'm not here trying to prove nothing to nobody because it's not about you trying to prove it because all of the proving will never, some folks will never believe you a child of God. And it doesn't matter what they believe, it's what you know. And it is what God knows about you. Somebody said, what God knows about me. So as a believer, we are literally what? Set apart. Somebody say, I'm set apart. It means we are made holy. This is the shot. This is the good part. Somebody say, I'm made holy. How are we made holy? Because, here's the other cause. Here's the why. Because of what? Our relationship with the one who bridges the gap between a holy God and a sinful human being. It is because, why, how am I, it, it, it's the how. It is how am I made holy? Because it is because of the one who bridges the gap. I got him, God. He said on that tree, when they hung him high, they stretched him wide. It became like a bridge. It became the bridge that got us over. It was the it was the debt he paid. It was the debt for human sin. It was the debt, not just I, I love it. He didn't pay it just for me. He paid it for the whole world. The Bible said it became the debt God paid through Jesus Christ for the sins of the entire world. He, he became the bridge when they hung him high. They stretched him wide and became like a bridge. It got us over. And that's where the significance happened. It is the gap. It is the gap that Jesus, Yeshua, pays the bridges between a holy God and sinful human beings. And it brings us to the point where as we confess and believe, we are made holy. One scripture says, we have been made to sit with him in heavenly places. <sighs> Somebody said, made to sit with him. It is not because of any of our own doing. It is because of God's love. What I love, uh, uh, the writer talks about when it uh, uh, begins to talk about this first Peter and, uh, and then first John, it is all based on the love of God. So that's what I love about this understanding of holiness. Holiness is no more uh, uh, this time, the way I grew up, it was all about uh, the, 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 the these and the thou's and the laws and the this and the that. But we understand even more clearly that it is based on the love of God. Yes, yes. Somebody says it's based on the love of God. The bottom line is you cannot separate. You cannot separate this reality of holiness from the love of God. It is because of God's great love that he wants us that he is so willing to have us be a part of the family of God that he would sacrifice his only son. Somebody said, that's love. That's what that song says, that no greater love, that's at the end, that's love, that's love. He went to Calvary to save a wretch like you, that's love. That's why it's so significant that we are celebrated. We do Holy Communion because it recognizes the fact that it's love. Somebody say, that's love. that's love. First John 1, 7 says, but if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have what? Fellowship. Woo! <laughs> oh, somebody said, we have, we have fellowship. We have fellowship, not just with God, but I love it. We have fellowship one with another. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's why we used to sing the song, uh, Friendship with Jesus, Fellowship Divine. Oh, what blessed, sweet communion. Jesus is a friend of mine. It is, he says, 1 John 1 and 7, but if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And uh, here, we, here we go. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us, what? From all sin. Somebody said, the blood of Jesus 
purifies us from all sin. Oh, don't you love it? See how this is working out? Somebody say, I see how this is working out. I see how it's working out now. So I, I, I mean, I'm many times I'm trying to figure out the what, the how. How is this going to happen? Somebody say, this is the how. How is it that I'm going to get past this point of feeling the pains of this sin, understanding, and this reality that even when so many times when I want to do right, so many things are plaguing me. And God, I love you. God, I want to do right. God, I want to be right. God, I want to live holy. God, I want to live the life that you call me How in the world. And I, am I going to get this done? He says, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, yes. we have fellowship with one another yes. and the blood of Jesus his son purifies us from all sin. That's why this, this sacrifice is so important because it's not, you couldn't do it. If we could have done it on our own, we wouldn't have needed Jesus. Somebody say it with me, if I could do it on my own, I wouldn't have needed Jesus. If I could have done it on my own, we wouldn't have needed this ultimate sacrifice. But thank God for Jesus. My daddy said like this, well, thank God for Jesus and thank Jesus for the blood. <laughs> Why? Because the blood purifies us from all sin. Somebody said the blood did it. That's why the song said the blood still works. Because it's the blood that does it. But without, the Bible says, the shedding of blood, there would be no remission for sin. That's why I don't want to waste the blood. That's why I ain't going to waste the blood. I don't want to waste the blood. I don't want it being in vain. I don't want Christ dying to be in vain. I don't want Christ's sacrifice to be in vain. I don't want the love of God to be in vain, and it will not, but I don't want it to be in vain on my behalf. Why? Because it is the how. How does this happen? How can I live holy in this corrupt world? How can I live holy? How can I not be somewhere mad and, and angry as, as I think about this? Uh, what's the day? The, what's the date today? The sixth, the seventh, the sixth. Tomorrow is going to be the seventh, which is the, the anniversary of Bloody Sunday. How can I be, not be angry? And, and that's my little snapback because uh, that happened just a few Sundays after I was born. Just a few Sundays after I was born with Bloody Sunday, March the 7th. A few Sundays after I was born, I, February the 9th, I was born. And March the 7th, a few Sundays later was Bloody Sunday, where all of these thousands of people marching because they just wanted to have that opportunity to vote that they were granted. They wanted it, but God uh, uh, knew uh, uh, that in his divine providence that God will see us today. Somebody else paid the price, took the beatings. Thank God that I didn't have to take. Amen. I don't know how it would turn out if they had been me. Somebody said, but God, God knew that today we would be in this place where, look at where we are, where that day back in 1965, we couldn't have been in a place like we are today. Oh, I just, let me just close the book. <laughs> Y'all know I'm telling the truth. <laughs> this, this, is, this is the miracle of what some price that others paid, that we can enjoy the benefits. Somebody say the benefits. benefits. I'm gonna talk about it some more next week because that bloody Sunday just led to uh, more days of them uh, before they finally got across that bridge, the Edmund Pettus Bridge, before they finally got to get across in peace, uh, in peace. And it took them almost to March the 25th before it happened, before they got to the Capitol, before they could make it, but they had to go through bloody Sunday. Now, I know we just got out of Black History Month, but I, I think we need to keep reminding ourselves Right? And the point is, there's always a price for where we need to get to. The price of holiness was Christ's sacrifice. 
The price of where we are today is the price of the sacrifice. And the beauty of it is, is as scripture says, we've been made holy. We've been made that way because of us accepting the gift. Somebody say, I accept the gift. And that's why we don't want to waste the sacrifice. 